Mexican Revolution started the first great wave of Mexican immigrants to the United States. Nearly one million people fled the fighting, which raged from 1910 until the early 1920s. The increase occurred just as U.S. public opinion was turning against immigrants from all nations. New laws in 1917, 1921, and 1924 imposed increasingly harsh restrictions on immigration, but Mexicans were spared the brunt of these laws because their labor was so vital to U.S. agriculture. In 1917, Petronilo Campos and his wife Basilia Campos, along with their four sons, began their journey from Durango, Mexico into the state of Colorado. And of those four sons, my great-grandfather, Aniceto Tony Campos, was just a small infant when he came into America. And my father was about two, two years old and he was carried across in a shopping bag. They followed another family member who, in, he lived in Colorado. And then from there, uh, my dad uh, went to Colorado and he went to a farm. These farmers had little ho homes for them. And he was a farm laborer in jail at the age of 21, I believe, that he met my mother and got married. On July 5th, 1939, Tony married his wife, Mary Lucy, and both resided in Grenada, Colorado. In that same year, Tony Campos answered the nation's call and served his time during World War II. Upon completion of his service, Tony, along with other foreign immigrants who served in the war, were granted their U.S. citizenship by President Truman. After he was discharged from the Army, uh, he was uh, granted a U.S. citizenship by President Truman. And at that time, he was already established in Colorado, where he started his career in the, with a railroad. Tony and Lucy would go on to start a family and have two sons and one daughter. My grandfather, Jerome Campos, who was born and raised in Grenada, Colorado, would go on to grow up and continue his journey outside of the little town. He would go on to meet and eventually marry his wife, Elizabeth Baca, and together they both would continue their journey outside of Colorado. We got married in September of 1962 and, uh, excuse me, 1961, and he joined the army in 1963. In 1963, Jerome Campos answered the nation's call and joined the army to fight in the Vietnam War. The reason that I joined the army is because I wanted to better myself because I didn't want to be a farm laborer. I didn't want to work for the railroad. Uh, and that's what I was going to amount to if I didn't do something about it. At the same time, the Vietnam War was hot. And they were taking anything as long as you put an X in that paper, they will take you. That's how bad it was that they needed you. And your finger, your trigger finger, as long as you could squeeze a trigger, you were in. No, that was a very hard time and scary for me and my family because I stayed with grandma and grandpa. So um, I was scared for my husband. He was so young. He too had never really left Colorado. So, and it was wartime when he left, so I was scared for him, and we were both lonely. Um, we did get through it, and because I stayed with my parents, and that when he was in Nam, I worked then, and that was a struggle. The girls were both very young, and in order to make ends meet, I worked. But my parents helped a lot in, t in caring for the girls. 
Jerome and Betty ended up having two daughters, Kelly and Denise. These two girls would spend most of their lives traveling all over the world from North Carolina to Italy to Pennsylvania and to eventually El Paso, Texas. My last assignment was in uh, Hope Place, Texas, and that's where I, I retired. Even though our family had their beginnings in Colorado, we ended up settling in El Paso, Texas. You can't help but to wonder and ask why stay in El Paso, uh, Texas. Both of our girls were out of high school and established. They were going to uh, community college. One was going to community college and the other one was working. And the fact that they were had already uh, established themselves in El Paso, and I too worked for civil service at the time, I decided that we should stay and remain close as a family in El Paso. Callie and Denise both married and stayed in El Paso. Callie, my mother, ended up having a son and a daughter, me, and my aunt Denise ended up having one son. It may not make a lot of sense, and it may have taken quite some time, but this is how my family reached America and eventually reached El Paso, Texas.